Welcome and be inspired with Dominic. Today I have a magic wand for you. Well, it's, it's a little unwieldy, but we'll make it work. After cutting this OSB into strips on the table saw, I measure the width against the plate of the mitre saw to produce rough squares. For that I use the markings on the saw, mainly because it doesn't have to be super precise. A stop block would work here as well, but trade speed for precision. And if you know me, you know what I'm all about. Neither of those. But less precision than speed if I had to pick one. I make this part short, because there's not much to it. I glued up a stack of these squares, some larger ones for the handle and thinner ones for the pointy end, and put it on the lathe between centers and the second I touched it with the tool, it broke. Which of course is what is to be expected, because while OSB is sturdy in most use cases, it has a crane direction and easily breaks when you come at it from the wrong side. Which is also the side I want to expose in this project. To solve this problem, I need to go heavy metal. This piece of thick stock served for about 30 years holding heating pipes in the foundation of the house. Now, some weirdo comes along and climbs it to a workbench, and then cuts off one end to get to a flat piece. Then he, I mean I, drill a hole into it with the diameter of the desired dowel, 8mm in this case. Back to the workbench with the hole clamped above the abyss. I use the angle grinder again to rough up the edges, which worked pretty much not at all. I should have used a file or a saw for that. But first I need to cut some stock. I cannot remember why I filmed this part, because it's pretty straightforward and borderline boring, but maybe that was the reason. Always fun to work in a small shop. And your regular reminder to be careful on the table saw. I use a block plane and chamfer one end so it fits the hole. The other end I put into the chuck of my drill. The rest is pretty straightforward. The square thing needs to go through the round thing. Better ridges along the hole in the metal would have probably made this quicker, but brute force worked out okay. Now that I have sturdy maple dowels, I need to drill the matching hole into the OSB pieces. For that I set up a jig. Just two pieces of slat connected at a right angle, and a handy thing to have in most situations. I made sure to position it properly for the drill to come down centered, but I somehow forgot about tear out. So I add a backer piece. Another handy thing to have, at least in this case, is a piece of wood trimmed to hold the small parts with. I also use it to remove the shavings, lest they clog up my reference surface. I have to reset the makeshift fans when I switch from the smaller OSB squares to the larger ones, but I want the backer bar to stay in place. The hole in it works perfectly to prevent tear out, so I clamp it down before moving the fans. With all holes drilled, I can start to put the wand blanks together. I put pieces of non-artificial wood at both ends, so I start with a block of fur and build on that. While this makes for a nice viewing experience, it works much better with actual wood glue between the pieces. I cut the dowel to length and clamp the whole thing up. I use parallel clamps to make sure that things do not bend and break, at least not at this point. With the glue set, I mark the middle of both ends of the dowel and place it between centers on the lathe. OSB is not the softest material to turn to begin with, but with the amount of flex this piece has, it becomes rather nerve-wracking as you get closer to the center. At some point, I ran out of patience and tried to make a steady rest. Let's call this version A for attempt, or version L for lackluster. Either way, the idea was to screw two wheels to a sled, as you can see, and then place that sled in a way that it would keep the workpiece in position. I mean, keep it thoroughly in place. And that is actually the part that did not work out as planned. But to be fair, it worked as I should have expected. So moving on to a more traditional design, I took a piece of plywood and drilled a hole into it at the correct height. I got that height by placing the plywood vertically on the lathe bed and poked it with the life center. That will be the through hole for the spindle turning to go through. After trimming it a bit, I mark the directions where the three supports are to come in. One straight up and two a third of a full turn on both sides. 
For the support I cut a few scraps to size and drill a hole near one end. To allow for some flexibility and to make it work at all, I then cut slots into these three parts. The table saw worked well enough with me flipping the piece over to keep the slot centered while widening it. The end of the slot will not be straight that way, but that does not really matter. It only needs to be wide enough to accommodate these bolts. The parts actually riding on the workpiece will be ball bearings, mounted in the holes using bolts and nuts. I lay them all out on the main piece and use that opportunity to replace this main piece with a bigger one. Then I mark for fasteners and two little cutouts for the nuts. Some trilling on and fret sawing off screen later, I can assemble my new steady rest. On a general note, it appears to be a common practice to use wheels here instead of ball bearings. While I could give you all the complex reasons why I chose ball bearings over wheels, the plain and simple truth is that I did not have anything else on hand. To fasten this contraption to the lathe, I laminate two pieces of plywood together and glue and screw them to the bottom of that steady rest. A long bolt through the block extends to a smaller one with a T-nut that fits through the slit in the lathe bed. I put it in, turn the lock block by 90 degrees and tighten the bolt. Once in place, I can thread the spindle through and fasten it between the centers. Then I can move the ball bearings up or down until they make contact with the wood, or OSB in this case. That should provide enough support for me to turn this wand in a decent fashion. I do need to move the steady rest a few times in order to get everywhere. While the somewhat open design allows me to get into there with the carbide tools, Doing so would remove the material the ball bearings are running against and thus cause unwanted strain on the spindle. Next up is the reason I want the OSB to tear out and also a weird idea. I have used this technique before but not often, so I did a small test piece first. This piece of OSB is also dowel enhanced. I have already spray painted it in gold, silver and glitter. Now the idea is to sand off as much paint as possible, leaving the tear out colored. I would say it worked decently here. Back to the actual wand. Since this is an experiment and I am, of course, a very careful and meticulous person, <coughs> there is only one way to do this. Go all out. After letting the paint dry, I start sanding it away again. That takes a while, especially since I could not be bothered to use the steady rest. Thus, had to take care not to push too hard, which isn't a good idea with sandpaper anyway. Once I was satisfied, despite a few spots where I got the feeling that the paint seeped into the wood, I finished the thing with my trusted beeswax all the way down rack. In order to take it off the lathe properly and also remove the softwood pieces, I use my parting tool to create recesses, where I then cut with the bandsaw. After covering the rest of the design with a little bit of painter's tape, I just spray paint the tip. Because why not? Let me be the first to admit that this tip kinda looks odd like a I don't know what it looks like, but it's it's there and it does kind of conceal the dowel in here, so I'll just have to live with that and now that it's off the lathe, finally, I think it doesn't look half bad. This thing here in front, it's just, well, it's, it's arcane scarring from using it for too powerful magic or whatever. It's one way to finish it. And so I did. Let me know what you think about this technique in the description down below and whether you have any idea how to actually maximize tear out on the lathe. I didn't really try using specially dull tools because the 
less sharp your tools are, the more vibration you get. And vibration with this material, even with the dowel, is probably not the best idea. The dowel at least held it together. Thank you for watching. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. I'm publishing new projects every now and then. I hope to get on a more regular schedule again. But, well, subscribe so you won't miss anything. And if you subscribed, thank you very much. Also, I'd appreciate it if you shared this video, if you got anything from it, if only a good laugh. It helps me and it doesn't cost you anything. Thanks for watching and as always, remember to be inspired.